boxing fans here with Tommy Fury. Tommy, it's been a, a good couple of weeks since I've seen you. I saw you last at your fight. Uh, I spoke to you after your fight. Firstly, how's things going? Um, what have you been up to after your fight? Yeah, I think everything's going well. Um, obviously, got a good win. So um, I sort of, ha I'm happy with that. So I can move on now. I can enjoy uh, the Christmas, Christmas period. Um, just chilling, you know. That's all I do outside of camp, you know, when I'm not pre preparing for a fight. I just um, I indulge in my food, in my drink and whatnot. Uh, and live life how it should be needed, you know. I put myself in training camp for, ha for a lot of hard weeks. So I think I deserve to enjoy the treats at this festive time of year. Of course, but outside the festive time of year, do you, do you generally look after yourself? Because there is some fighters um, that sort of balloon up and then have to go back down and go through the whole weight thing. Are you yeah. one of them? You don't look like you're obviously, but do you, are, you, are you one of yeah. them? Yeah, of course. At the end of the day, um, I, I keep myself in good nick all the time. You know, you'll, you'll never catch me, you know, at any time in the year where I'm looking in bad shape. You know, I'll always obviously in camp. I like to do a lot of weight training and keep myself nice and strong. So I tend to fluctuate my, my weight quite high, but that's only because of muscle. You know, when I like to, you know, I like to go away and stuff like that, I like to look in decent shape. And that's why that's why the weights go into play. Um, so if I'm not boxing training and doing a lot of cardio, I'll be doing a lot of weights, um, as I'm doing now. Um, but I'll always look in good shape because, yeah, I do keep myself in good nick. Uh, being a professional athlete, I feel like, you know, it's a 24-7. It's not just a, you know, one-night thing or a 12-week thing. It's uh, it's all year. I spoke about your last fight. Uh, you know, you got the stoppage that you wanted. You got that that sort of high, highlight reel stoppage. Um, just looking at social media, because you're this reality star as well, as well as a boxer, people, uh, you get double the amount of eyes out on you. Um, yeah. People are talking about your opponent not being up to scratch. When you look at social media, what, what do you take from, from people talking about that? Um, I don't take anything, really. I know that, you know, every top fighter that has ever, ever been, um, you've got to look at their, you know, first five fights, sort of say five, six fights, um, and they're all the same caliber as that. Um, Bob, I just have fought the same man that I did as a British champion. So, you know, that's what you've got to look at. The man was British champ champion, I think, two or three times. Um, and if he's jumping in the ring with him, then what, why can't I, a person who's not an Olympian, a person who's not had a thousand amateur fights, a person who's only had 10 amateur fights, um, a year out of the ring might I add. Um, and it doesn't matter. When it comes to doing them, and, People look at the records and say, oh, this and that, this and that. But you can guarantee they've been robbed a couple of times on them. Um, and most of the time, they, they turn up and they just try and stroll for the fight. Um, the fellow's game, as you could see, and he came to win. Um, and that's it. You know, all, all these men can fight. It's just nine times out of ten, they want to come pick up the money and go home to the family. But because I'm a fury and I am who I am, every there's no point calling my opponents journeymen because every time they come to fight, they'll come to win. And that's just as simple as it is because everyone wants to make an aim and everyone wants to get Fury in the record. Yeah, of course. Um, what did you take away from your last fight? I know you wanted to sort of dust off the cobwebs. You, you've been, you, like you said there, it's been a year since you've been in the ring. Was it, yeah. just, was it just a case of sort of finding out where you were against, against a, a valid opponent uh, and just, just seeing what, what sort of stage you're at? Yeah, definitely. That's what it was about. You know, I say to a lot of people, the second round should have been the first round in my eyes. Um, you know, but that is genuinely down to the ring out the year, you know, lack of sparring, you know, I could have sparred miles more for this fight. Um, but there, there's no way around it. You know, it was what it was. Um, I'm happy with the stoppage um, and I'm happy with highlights in the fight. But, you know, in hindsight, I'll be hopefully back out, you know, in the start of the year. Um, and then we can just get cracking, you know. Just as more fights you get, the better you'll get. And that's, that's, that's just the case for me. You know, the more fights I get underneath my belt, the more you'll see me blossom as a fighter, but it's no good to keep, you know, having a fight, having a year off, have a fight, have a year off. Like, you're not going to get anywhere like that. You're not going to improve. So that's just my main focus on what I've been shouting for, really, just more fights. That's it. Uh, how much was it? How much did it mean that, you, you know, for that fight, you, you were with Sugar Hill Tyson, who was, who was training for a possible fight, obviously, uh, that hasn't come to fruition. Uh, but how much did that mean that, you know, you, you had your brother there, you had Sugar Hill, who seems to be implementing new things into your brother's arsenal. Um, how was that for yourself? Yeah, it was good. You know, it's always an absolute pleasure to be around world-class company. And that's exactly what I was around. I was around a world-class trainer. I was around the best fighter on the planet and world-class advice from everywhere I looked. You know, my dad was there, Sugar Hill was there, Tyson was there. You know, it was just class all around me. Um, so it was just sort of picking that stuff up 
um, and get into grips with it. You know, it's sort of take one thing, you know, each time really, because it, obviously it's, it's high end level stuff, and I was trying to take it in the best way I could. Um, but as we've seen in the finish, you know, we worked a lot in putting my punches together. Uh, we worked a lot bringing power through to the shots, and you know, obviously that paid off. Um, so there's positives to take up, take away from that, and there's negatives to take away from that. You know, of course there is. Um, but that's why we need the fights and that's why we keep learning. Listen, one of the names that came to mind and I think you spoke about it at the press conference when you got questioned was John Tawala's brother, Marcelos, um, a, a, maybe a possible fight in the future. What do you make of that? You did say, you know what, we, we could do it in the future. What, what, what would you say if that fight was presented to you in 2021? Yeah, listen, it's, uh, at the end of the day, it's all tongue and cheek, isn't it? But I'll never shy down for a fight in my entire life, no matter who's it from. Uh, but no, it was it is what it is, isn't it? You know, I would take any fight with both hands, um, because it is what it is. It's a fight. I do it every day in the gym, so whatever comes, I'll uh, I'll take me away, not a problem. What do you make of the sort of the current crop of the British light heavyweights? We've got uh, Anthony Yard who's fighting this weekend uh, against Lyndon Arthur, Joshua Boazzi. Another name that springs to mind also is Callum Johnson. Probably the three that are sort of the top in regards to the British light heavyweights. What, what do you make of the current crop at the moment? I think it's a very good crop. Um, you know, you've got an exciting, brilliant fight on this weekend. Yeah. One that I'll definitely be tuning into um, because that for me is, you know, up there with the Dubois and Joyce fight. I think it's a really, really good fight. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a good crop of fighters. You know, I think, you know, you've got tons of standout names in light light heavyweight division in, on you know on the British scene. And you know, we as as a fan myself and as the public, we can all just indulge and you know enjoy these fights and just hope that you know, more fights like this, like this get made because imagine it being a weekday and then sitting to yourself, oh, we've got this great fight on, we've got this great fight on, week after week after week, you know, boxing will be th absolutely thriving. Yeah. Um, but that's just what we need more of. Who do, how, who do you rank as the best in, in, in the light heavyweights out of them three? In Britain? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's got to be, it's got to be yard really, hasn't it? Um, because he, he's, he's been to the highest, you know, he's been at the highest point out of everyone in Britain. He's fought Kovlev, acquainted himself very well. Um, and I think he only lost that in that fight because of experience. Um, so you've got a right yard. Lyndon, yeah. you know, he, he is what he is. He's, he's right up there. You know, they're all right up there. Joshua Brotsy coming through. I see he had a tough uh, test against Selic. Um, Selic, is it? Kalic. Kalich, yeah. Yeah, Kalich, yeah. yeah, he had a good test in. He had a good test in him, and um, I've seen a lot of things that I like. You know, he didn't have it all his own way, and he come back. Um, you know, he got stuck in, and you know, it's, all these fights. You know, the great fighters, and they just need to be involved in great fights now. And um, that's all it is. I'm sure in time they will be. Tommy, I'm going to be a pain. Can I? Your fingers actually blocking some of the camera on this side. I think. Yes, I see that. There we go. Sorry, I'm so sorry about that. Um, Talk to me about Lyndon Arthur then and uh, Anthony Yard. We know this weekend I'm actually in the bubble, going to be covering the fight. Uh, but yeah. how do you see that one playing out? Um, I really see that being, you know, youth. You know, well, they're both in the youth, aren't they? But what I meant to say is, like, experience in one hand and, you know, an untested quantity in Lyndon. You know, Lyndon's Commonwealth champion. He's a, he's a good fighter. I've sparred him many times. Um, and I do think it's a genuine 50-50 fight where there's no one I'm really leaning toward because on one end you look at it, you know, Yard's been in with Kovalev, he's fought for the world title, he's done very well in the world title fight to give him a lot of confidence against a great champion. Mm -hmm. And Lyndon, on the other hand, is young, he's coming up, Commonwealth champion, undefeated, carries a lot of power, so he's got every confidence in his own right. And I think it's a perfect style, you know, Lyndon's got that relaxed style you know, on the back foot, he can he can box nice and smoothly, like we've seen against Dex Bellman. And Yard likes to come forward and press the action and try and get the stoppage. Uh, but I think if Lyndon uses his jab and his weapons and invites Yard in and catches him on the way, I think it could be a very interesting fight. But, you know, it's, it's all about game plans, isn't it? Because if you go in there and try and mix it, you know, with Yard, it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's one of them things because Lyndon can bang himself. So it really is a pick and fight. It's going to be a good fight nonetheless, um, two, two good punches. But let's move on to uh, the weekend's boxing just gone. Probably one of the best fights uh, in regards to British boxing this year was between Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce. We saw yeah. what happened there. You know, Joe Joyce established that jab well, beat Daniel Dubois on the night. Now, um, in boxing, when something like this happens where somebody takes a knee and sort of, you know, gets out of the ring that way, 
you go on social media and all you see is quitter by you know loads of people are calling him a quitter you see fighters call him a quitter which is one thing but when fans call him a quitter it's, it's a different thing what did you make of this label that he's that lab, this label that's getting thrown about that he's a quitter now I mean, I mean, everybody watched a fight on Saturday night, you know, and everybody can think what they're going to think about, you know, what he did. Um, you know, he did what he wanted to do, and that was obviously taking Ian, get out of the fight. And, you know, I don't know how much pain he was in or whether he couldn't see. I don't know what he was in because I'm not him, but I can only speak for myself in that situation. Um, and it's a lot easier to say when you're not in that situation. But this is the God's honest truth from my lips. If whenever I'm in a fight, and it might be just that mentality of my of our family. You'd, you'd literally have to crucify me. I don't care whether I'm blind in both eyes. I'll never fight again. I don't care. I'll never take a knee and 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 just get out of the fight because I, I don't. In a fight, I wouldn't be thinking about you know what's up with my eye, what's up with this. I'd be getting. I'd be trying to get stuck into him the best way I can. And to lose a fight, I think you'd have to be not clean out. And that way, I said, well, I couldn't. I, can't, I can't, could not get up. Like, there's no way I could have got up and made it. You know. And that's just the way I feel, and a lot of fighters think that way. Um, you know, you'd literally have to kill me to get the, get me out of the ring. But you know, Daniel obviously thinks the way he wants to think. Um, and listen, he's young, he's a strong, he's a good fighter, um, and he can come again. You know, and and, that, and that's just the way it is. Um, you know, you it's hard to tell because when a fight has not been tested and had and you know that was the first time Daniel's not had it his own way. Basically, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say, you know, when he got a bit back. Is there a bit of not liking it? You know, it did look like that, you know, but, but he, he stuck in there, he tried, but there's nothing really to say about it. Everyone's got their own opinion and what happened happened. Joe Joyce moves on and Dubois goes back to the drawing board and he comes back at the end of the day. Uh, I'm sure he can. What did you make of Joe Joyce's game plan where he just had that job on point? At yeah, I think it was a great game plan, um, keeping that baby with a jab, you know, and putting him on the back foot. I kind of likened it to what Tyson did against Wilder, you know, he pushed Daniel Dubois back. Daniel Dubois doesn't go back. He doesn't fight on the back foot. He comes forward with big, heavy shots. So to put him on the back foot with the jab straight away, I think that was perfect, a perfect game plan. Um, but I would have loved to see him put the right hand behind it. I know the jab was doing all the work, yeah, and he didn't need to throw the right hand. Yeah, but imagine if he'd have thrown the right behind it and the left hook behind that and the left hook behind that and put his shots together. You know, maybe he would have knocked him out. But you never know. It's uh, it's one of those things. The fight played out the way it did. I think it was a very good performance from him. And I think if he gets the Usyk fight, I think he will. I think he beat Usyk. Interesting. Um, another fight that happened that night in America. The two veterans came out of retirement. Um, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. What did you make of this exhibition fight? I thought it was good. You know, people say what they want about it, but I thought it was good. I stayed up till half six in the morning. I watched it because Mike Tyson's probably out of the top two of my favourite fighters ever. And I never thought I'd get the chance to say I'd seen Mike Tyson fight live. Uh, obviously, no doubt, it was a shadow of his former self, but it was still Mike Tyson in there, throwing leather. He had the head speed, he had the hand speed, he's just his feet wasn't quite there. Um, yeah, I think it was good. It was good, for, it was good for the fans. You know what, uh, on Saturday, it was uh, the sort of five years since Tyson Fury, your brother beat Vladimir Klitschko. What memory stands out for you? Because obviously you were around Tyson at that time. You were a younger, skinnier Tommy Fury. <laughs> what, what, what sort of stands out for you? What sort of memory stands out for you at that time? Um, um, everything, you know, the camp, the whole build-up to it, it was all exciting. You know, it was all special. And that's what it was the whole night. Summed up in one word, it was special. Um, and that's a night I'll never forget. You know, Tyson beating Klitschko in Germany. You know, 10 years, 12 years, whatever he was, um, reigning defending champion. Like, it was unheard of. Everybody wrote him off. And then the famous words from the United Kingdom, you know, that's, that's all we all remember. So, you know, it was a great day and it, it will never, it never be forgotten because um, when was the last time someone went to someone's backyard? He's not been defeated in 12 years and beaten. And points as well. I think many of us forget that on points. Um, you know, it's, I don't think that'll ever be done again, really, in that style. It was, I was shut out completely against a, a great champion. You know what? I'm talking about doing something that's quite different, the way that he beat John T. Wilder in that second fight. Tyson, that whole week, was saying, listen, guys, I'm going to knock him out. I'm going to deal with him. I'm going to knock him out. And there was not... I spoke to a lot of people on fight week, and they were like, no, Tyson will win on points. Um, yeah. But seeing your brother do what he did on that night, 
Yeah, how much of an inspiration is that? Because it seems like whenever Tyson says something, he, he's not, he's, he's not, he doesn't lie. He actually says, he actually has that method in his head already that he's going to beat the opponent. Yeah, whatever he says, he does. You know, whatever um, he says, it comes true. And there was only his family and his team believed in him, you know, um, when, he, when he said those things. And I knew it was going to happen because name me a time Tyson has said something, he hasn't done it. You know, he said he said he was going to win all these fights. He said he was going to be from right right from the start. He was going to be undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and he has done, and he is that. So you can't ever bet against Tyson because you lose because whatever the man says he's going to do, he's going to do it. Um, like we've seen against Wilder in the second fight, you know, he won the first fight outright. You know, that was a bad bad robbery, as everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but he put the record straight in the second fight and. In absolutely fantastic style, you couldn't beat you couldn't have beat Wilder in any better way. You know, nobody could have done the job on Wilder like that at for Tyson because you need a big set of bollocks in the heavyweight division, and the only man with them kind of bollocks to go out there in America and do that is Tyson. Nobody else to go. I'm gonna tell you that forever. 